What's going on? This is the NOC, the Nerds of Color, and I am back with another knock exclusive. I am Kuya P, aka Patrick Michael Strange, and I got another fire one, y'all. You know I love hip hop, and especially when you blend hip hop with the pop culture, with the nerdness. Yo, I got the Black Nerd Ninja. Yo, let's give them some love. Black Ninja Nerds in the house. What's going on, everybody? Go Ninja, go! You know the I <laughs> <laughs> love it. I love your logos, man. I peeped uh, quite a bit of your, your work and uh, some of the production on your website, man. You're doing some some oh, things yes, major, sir. man. You're showing your love for, for, for your nerdness as well as the hip-hop, man. I, bro, you, you come from the same cloth I am, man. I love it. Real good, yeah, man. Yeah, man. Got to, man. Got to. Cool, cool, yeah, man. Hey, before we get into this, you know, I want to put it together. I put together a little package for the uninitiated so they could check you out. But before we just get okay. down, man, we're living in crazy times right now. And uh, mm -hmm. the reason why I jumped back into this is to inspire cats that, you know, I was down and, and, and out for a little bit. You know, COVID hit us all, you know, hard. It was kind of yeah. hard to create. So how are you doing right now uh, with these COVID times? And, you know, just a message you want to put out to the people to just continue to get motivated and creating right now. Yeah, dude, so pretty much you just got to get creative. Uh, pretty much before COVID hit, I had some things lined up as far as tour-wise. So right now, I usually be on tour. I'd be on tour real hard right now. But when COVID hit, that shut all that down. So um, I really just went back to my roots from uh, high school, just being on the lunch room table, freestyling, and really just took it to social media and took time out to learn how social media operates because uh, sometimes I can get fixed-minded. So before, I really had to worry about because my bread and butter is really from touring. But when COVID hit, it, I had to go on social media and find other ways, find other avenues. Like the videos uh, you said earlier, I do. I wasn't even creating videos before because I was just touring so much, right? So it had me go back to my roots, and I had to get back creative, get back, um, start stepping back out of the box a little bit more. So yeah, it slowed me down, but it, it, I feel like in this moment, it got me back to the basics, though, what truly created me and what motivates me. I love it, man. So you adapted and you overcame, man. That's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. So that's yeah. what you, you know what I'm saying? If, if, if things, are, things, things aren't always going to be what you think they're going to be. So you got to kind of, you got to move and move and duck and move, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Switch up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, before it, life hits it, you, man. Yeah. Especially yes, sir, in these weed. Trump times, man, you know, anyway, <laughs> but uh, all right, y'all, let me introduce you to my brother through his work. Here we go. This is the Black Nerd Ninja right here. We are tonight's entertainment. Uh, this is fans only, with your arms and your legs only. Galloping stallion, I transform like Megan. Life is good once upon a game. Man, tip the fans on it. Man, keep them fans on me. What's cool inside the cooler? Chilling young ruler. Mingling with fans only. Yeah, this is fans only. <laughs> See? They can't put their hands on me. Abomination, no policies, no apologies. Hate the bending knee. See, but we never sleep. We adjacent to 1600 Street, man, where well, we couldn't breathe. Uh, human melon, melanie, playing throughout the American history like a broken trilogy. Man, they can never censor me or sniff for me. Man, too many roles like Jenny D. Uh, Hunter Sunny D. Man, in that deep blue sea with every year, land Tiffany. Fans only. Yeah, this is fans only. This is fans only. With your arms and your legs only. <laughs> yeah, this is fans only. With your arms and your legs only. Hey, my little sunshine, open up the blinds. Let a little light shine on my sunshine. Let a little KC and the sunshine. Yeah, that's the way my sunshine. All my life, all my life. We had to fight all our life. We celebrate all our life. That's the keys and way of life. Ultra spray catching waves, sleeping beauty. Waking up the brighter days, hand in hand, posing for the gram. Plant more seeds, multiply. Yeah, that's the plan. Seeing the hills from the skyscrapers. We see past the block. 
Fox and them life takers We taking chances, splitting eggs at the baskets Give your flowers right now before they drop your casket Yeah My sunshine, my sunshine In the ball of wine, yeah we all wine In the twine, in this moment time Captivated with my sunshine and I ain't worrying about a hater slash imitator We not even on the same escalator Her slim chances will be in the same elevator I'm alleviating any negative instigators Her white striped elephant painted calligraphy Mental telepathy, belligerent and taking relevant If it ain't clear, then it's hesitant And we were never innocent I never need consent to make ourselves relevant Her choice is held accountable Yeah, I'm mad at me because my life was a tragedy I'm mad at me Devising a plot twist Turning lemons into wine That's the twisting of the lines I'm the holy trinity I turn water into wine Girls fold the bum the X timeline Quantum leap in affinity Yeah Fast track of my lifespan Spam on my life stands Will around the king's table with my crowns man yeah. All right, there you go, Black Nerd Ninja in the house, down with the NOC. We got the true nerd with the nerds of color, man. <laughs> uh, yo, welcome, 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 man. Pleasure to have you on. Uh, let's dig in for the uninitiated. Let's let's tell them from the the seed to to the tree of amazingness that you you know you've grown and you're, you you you've got a great project called R H H L W P. Respect, humanity, honor. Loyalty, warriors, and proudly, man. We're gonna get into that, but we want to yeah. start from the jump off, man. Uh, tell me about your your parents, man. Uh, well, where are they from? Where before you came into the picture? A little bit about them to then when they you came into the world. Okay, so uh, so my parents are from Athens, Georgia. Uh, most people know for UGA, University of Georgia, Georgia Bulldogs. Uh, yeah, classic city, man. So they just from the East Side of Athens, you know. Um, met, got together, had me, <laughs> you know, the basic, but I would say the main thing to take from them would be, uh, we did, uh, side jobs, like on the weekends and side jobs throughout the week. Right. So we all, we were always on the go. We were always working. We was on somebody like me and my father, my brother, we were always on somebody's roof up under somebody's house. We were always working. Um, we were always moving some cutting grass, whatever, cause we're down South. Um, but I took that from them and applied it to uh, what I'm doing now. And then for my mother, my mother really got to technology uh, heavy, like early technology, like early, you know, with the slow dial up. <laughs> so so, uh, so I took that from her, man. So just adding that technology element. But before Black Nerd Ninja, I went by Lujing, as we all do, I was trying to, um, what uh, I was trying to do what I seen was making money. So we're just gonna keep it 1000. So at that time I was trying to make those hot songs, trying to find those, uh, make those hot videos, trying to make those catchy hooks, you know what I'm saying? Really just following the same mainstream trend. But in my heart, I knew that wasn't who I was. So it wouldn't be until like uh, years later, man. So this is around like 94, 95 high school doing all this around early 2000s. So still doing the same thing. It wouldn't be until around like 2005 I started switching up because right. when, at that moment, at that moment I realized like, come on, man, you gotta be one, be honest with yourself. You can't keep doing this. It's not who you are. So what I did was I actually took a four year hiatus, man, to figure out who I was, to figure out who I wanted to be. Um, I tell people like when it when it comes to you. Um, you have to wake up in the morning, look yourself in the mirror and be okay with you. It don't matter about nobody else as long as you okay with you. 
So I came to that, um, I came to that moment where I had to make a decision, like, who do you want to be? Do you want to keep going, trying to make stuff to be catchy or do you want to be yourself? And so, uh, so I had moments even up to that point where I was sitting at contract tables, man, about to sign deals, but everybody wanted the same thing. Hey, can you write about this? Can you write about that? And I've never really been big on, I'm from the South, but I never really used Southern slang like that. I use like a little Southern slang. I, I just been weird like that. Um, but I never use Southern slang to the, to the extent of like some of my peers. Uh, so it, I got to the table and they wanted all that, all those changes from me. And in my heart, I knew that's not who I wanted to be. And so I took four years off and figured out who I wanted to be. And then I came back with Black Nerd Ninja. And then once I launched Black Nerd Ninja, Black Nerd Ninja started rolling. And it's like, it's what you hear now. So if you go through like the whole catalog, I did the catalog. You remember, you remember the X-Men issues from the 90s where uh, all the covers connected? That was the thought process on all my projects. I want each project to connect where you can listen to them out of order, but you can go back and listen to another project that refer that references the other project. So I, I went, I uh, attacked Black Nerd Ninja content like that. Um, so then I had a minor stroke like four or five years ago. And so that caused me to come to another place in my life where I had to reevaluate. Because at that point, I identified as being invincible, not going to die. And so after that happened, <laughs> we were touring. Like we had been touring five years straight. Uh, the stress of the road and just a whole bunch of things were going on because we were in high demand. And so uh, after that, I took like another two years off. And then that what brought me back to the message. Because initially when I started Black Night Ninja, I just wanted to be like a flagship for those just to be yourself. And so somewhere along, like, you know how this goes, somewhere along the line, you lose that message in touring and people offer you like guaranteed money show for shows. And so then we say it's not about the money, but it's really about the money at some points. And so I start bl blurring the lines a little bit. So after the minor stroke, I got back to the basics. So that's where that's where all this new material comes from, like mission statement, the bride. I started really, really putting more thought into what I was saying to the people. So that was brings us up to this new project now. Word, word, whoa. You went, you went just like <laughs> like the flash, bro. You went Justice League on me. You went Wally West, yeah. Barry Allen on me. I wanna yo, I just wanted to start from the seed and then we we went flash mode real quick. Impulse. Style. Yeah, man. Flash you flash know. point, dude. Flash point. You know, so hold up, hold up. Before we get into that, man. I, I didn't want to get there yet that quick, but uh I, I love it. You know what I'm saying? When 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 cats start going, I just let them flow. Cause that, that's just, that's hip hop. Yeah, yeah, it's all good. That's hip hop. It's, you it's gotta let good. that, that thought good. out. Yeah. So uh, let me yeah. take it back real quick again. So you, you were born okay. in Athens, Georgia, yeah, yeah. Uh, amazing yeah. parents. Um, but like, mm -hmm. how was growing up before you discovered hip hop? I want to, I want to take us on that journey. Okay. So like as, as a on young, okay. as a young cat, like um, <laughs> what music uh -huh. were they into that you got into? You know what I'm saying? So like, what do you remember just growing up as a kid? And then, you know, discovering, oh, well, just, okay. just growing up as a kid. And then, then we'll lead into like, you know, discovering music with what your parents were okay. talking about. And then maybe even your okay. nerdness. When, when did your early nerdness start happening? When did you get into comic books? But let's, okay. let's start from the, you, from the kid, the kid route. You feel me? And uh, like, so okay. like, talk about as a little kid <laughs> growing up, what were you into? And what would like, did your parents, okay. like what toys did they buy you? You know what I'm saying? Let's, let's talk about that. Okay. You, like, oh, you want to go? Okay. You want to go way back, way back. Way okay. back, brother. So, uh, <laughs> way back machine. We time travel. All right. So, so actually, I was, uh, uh, uh it's, it, I was a very wild kid in the beginning. <laughs> I repeat this second grade. <laughs> I was very, I was very um, impulsive, right? I was very impulsive, so I, I would do any and everything, whatever whatever sparked in me, I did it. Um, this is pre everything. Before I knew what I wanted to do in my life, I was just very impulsive. So where um, got in and got in trouble, uh, you know, the usual stuff, nothing nothing hardcore, but got into some trouble just just because I was just so impulsive, and um, yeah, do uh, so hung around on east side. Hung around on, so, okay, for those who don't know, so in Athens, uh, you got the east side, you got the west side, you also have a north side. So I'm from, I, I lived all over Athens, so to the point where I, once I got old enough, I was able to just travel around. But kid me, man, I was impulsive, uh, got in trouble, and then <laughs> that's when my father took me up under his wing more closely. Yeah. Um, that's, when, that's what led to the whole, hey, I got to get a grip of him because I just, I've always been independent. I've been independent since day one. So you was always um, at the house, my, not really like yeah, playing with toys. You yeah. wanted to hang out with like your partners in the, in the neighborhood or whatever. 
Uh, not necessarily that, but just I've I never really whether we hang out, don't hang out. I was good. If, if I just I've always been self conscious of me. Mm. Let me put it like that. I always been self conscious of me knowing what I wanted to do. And okay. at that at that point, I didn't know exactly as far as like entertainment or or like uh, uh, sports or something like that. I just knew there was something within me that I wanted to do. Um, All right. So yeah, during that time, so I started working with my father. So I was with him up on the house doing plumbing. Uh, okay. We was doing roofing. We were cutting grass, you know, we pretty much were doing it all, just doing odd jobs because uh, I want to say we we're, I got to be careful because just came mama hear this. Uh, yeah. I was just say we we're middle class, but it feel like it was middle class, right? But I we didn't you. go without. <laughs> but you was, but, but you was, um, <laughs> he was teaching you how to be a working man and just take care of yourself correct, in correct, the world. Correct. But, correct. So, so then uh, some of the stuff I want to know is it, but you're, you're creative. So like on your off time, like how, what, what were you getting into? to what were the first experimentation into creativity outside of, you know, cause I'm sure you did, you know, you, you was listening, you paying attention to your pops, listening to yeah, what, you know, yeah, what yeah. he said to, to make your way That's in right. this world. But That's I know, right. uh, you know, when you have that heart, like, or when did you discover mm -hmm. that you wanted to do more than just that? You know what I'm saying? Okay. In, in regards to yeah. creativity. Yeah. So pretty much, um, uh, as far as I go in the off time, we weren't working. I pretty much, I, I used to design my own comic books. So oh. I used to draw like 24 seven. Yeah. I had my own characters, had so my own series. Like, where were you like, were you reading like specific comic books? Like, can you remember your first comic book or were you a Marvel or DC cat? You know, like okay. what was so before, it? Before, so my mother draws and my, okay. my mother draws more realistic style. And my father was drawing more like uh, characters. Oh, dope. And so the mix, yeah. So the mix between the two, I feel like in more, I designed my own comic book characters just from my own thoughts until one day, my father brought this big bag of comic book home, right? Like a big bag, a big bag. So, uh, so he brought these comic books home, and I that's when I dived into those, and then that's when I started learning how to illustrate better. How, and I worked on my techniques just from watching those and reading those. Uh, I would say the my favorite comic book series that really st that stuck out to me would be uh, X Men. That's my favorite comic book series okay. because the covers, you, you remember those covers? With oh, the, yeah. You, you were talking about the Jim together. Lee joints. Yeah. yeah. That, yeah that, that's man. my guy right there. Yeah. yeah. He, he had all the connected but. joints. So many, <laughs> man. Back then, they, they were coming out with foil covers. They were going yeah, variant cover crazy back in the crazy, 90s, bro. Man. Crazy, yeah. bro. Crazy, so bro. But it did, but those are. Yeah, man. And then so I like X-Men just because I felt like an outsider. And right. then I like Spider-Man, uh, Spectacular Spider-Man, Amazing Spider-Man, um, Spider-Man, you know. What I'm so I like Spider-Man just because of what he went through day to day. As far as like, you know, he really some days he wanted to be Spider-Man, some days he didn't want to be Spider-Man. That's how I felt like as a kid. Some days I wanted to do some work, some days I didn't want to do any work. You know what I'm saying? So I, I identify more as uh, just as a kid with uh, Spider-Man, with Peter Parker. But my favorite team and love of comic books where where I always fell in was uh, X-Men. Word. Love it. Love yeah. it. So, uh, all right. So you got into the comic books, but you're also working at the same time. Um, how yeah. did music come into the picture? Or were like, uh, what were you listening to? Like, because uh, you got into hip hop, you know, was there, was there a favorite MC you started peeping? Or were you uh, even, even R&B cap or, or soul? Or just some other kind yeah. of music before you discovered that right there <laughs> you know because a lot of us yo I, I, it was r&b in my uh -huh. house before i discovered hip-hop and i was like Ooh, mm -hmm. watch mm -hmm. out now what is yep. what and yeah. then gangsta music <laughs> woo, you know yeah. be careful because oh, like yeah if my mom heard me listen to this i might get in trouble uh-huh uh -huh. they saying so many curse words <laughs> and you're like oh man yes but it was uh -huh. dope though it was hot. Yes, <laughs> yeah. no so music so musical wise um so on the weekends me and my father and sometimes my brother, we would go to, uh, it's a flea market. So we'd go sell like odds and ends. And even when we're working or driving, he would listen to classic rock. I kid you not, classic rock. And then it'll be, it'll go from that to gospel. It was just a range of everything with him, right? Uh, from blues, you know, from when the family comes over. So it was a range. Of, so pretty much I got the whole spectrum um, from my father, because as we rode and go to the go do different jobs, odd jobs and whatnot, he would listen to everything, everything. So like I fell, I just fell in love with music overall, right? Because I was so open to it. Because like I said, in my the way I think, 
there is no different genres in my head. It's just whatever you whatever you want to create. That's just how I that's how I view music. It's whatever you want to create. But to hear all those different sounds and all those different styles, and to hear the guitar notes, to make the guitar talk, you know what I'm saying? To make the keyboard, to make the keys sing, to make the keys talk. That that right there, he will always mention stuff like that. And then he played piano a little bit. And so music, so we had the whole spectrum of music of music, but Here's, you know how it goes. Your cousin moves next. Your big cousin moves next door. <laughs> he comes over one. He comes over one evening, talking about, "Hey, we're gonna start rapping." And I'm like, "Uh, but we can't rap though. So, well, how are we gonna how are we gonna do that?" He's like, "Well, I'm gonna write your stuff for you." And he's writing stuff that's way above my head that I'm not even doing. And so, at this time, this would be around night three because this one Snoop came out. Uh, so Snoop and the Dog Pound. I've, I've listened to hip hop before that, but as you said before, I was R and B. I wanted to sing, my man. I wanted to sing my little heart out. Yo, Let me tell you something. I, I want to sing my little heart out in the in choir. I was in a church choir, and in my school we had like little boys to men, troop, Jodeci, uh-huh. Silk, Portrait, yeah, yeah, yeah. type vibe. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because we, we wanted to get the girls, bro. Like that's we, right. We came together to just sing to the ladies, man. But that's I right. Feel you <laughs> look, you so what's, what the put in the that was my dad sat me down and said, "Dad, I want to sing. I want to sing." We we're sitting outside um, in the in the back porch area. I said, "I want to sing." I said, "I believe I can sing." He said, "Well, sing something." And I said, "I think I sing like." Little Tevin Campbell, and uh, and he he said and listen yes. like <laughs> He said they listen like this. He like this. Uh, 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 uh. Nope. <laughs> My man let me down so smooth. He said, "How about you do a little more practice and then we'll circle back round to this." And I was like, "Okay." He pretty much said I can't sing though. That's what he said to me. <laughs> So, I love it. so it'd be a little time. So, so my cousin popped up at the house talking about we're gonna start rapping. He wrote that stuff for us. It was me and his little brother. Um, so Aidy and Brute. So we're always sitting back there just rapping, just rapping, just rapping. So we we didn't record anything at that time, but they they uh he was part of a group that pioneered uh around here during that time that that created our local Athens sound at the time that really solidified. We had groups doing stuff before then, but they that group underground sound. And Notorious South, they really created something together as a unit. But um, but I never recorded anything with them. I was just pretty much I was because I was still a kid, right? He was he was like a lot older than me. And um, so anyway, one one evening I'm sitting back there, everybody's gone. I'm outside by myself. I was like, you know what? Let me see if I can write something. Let me just see if I can write something. Because before then he was writing my stuff for me. And so I was like, let me see if I can truly write something. And and keep in mind, during this time frame, so pretty much all my time before that, all my free time was drawing. That's all it was. It was drawing. That's all I did up to that point. Whenever you saw me, I was just drawing. I was illustrating, creating my comic books. That's all I was doing. I was fully focused on that because I knew, once again, like I told you before, I always knew what I wanted to do. It was just finding that purpose and finding that direction. So was so it I at was that point you wanted to be like a comics creator or, or artist? Yeah, yeah, okay. yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I was headed that direction. I gotcha. was like, like... Dude, I literally had like I had like I I would create my own comic books, like staple them together and create them and really draw them out by hand and have them like laid out. I had at that point I had to create a puzzle that I create my character on and I enter into a contest and, and made the puzzle into and turned that in. So I, I was truly focused. So whenever I whenever I attach to something, I focus in on it. Um, that but that goes back to the hard work that we put in, as far as that from working with my father. Uh, so once I really truly start writing. I got the bug for writing. And so then that's when I started writing after that. So all my energy started going into rapping. And so then that's the, so this is where we got to from that. <laughs> but yeah, it. so that was, yeah. But yeah, that, so that, that would put me on this journey because I tuned in on it. Um, yeah, that's it. Yo, love it, love it, love it. So tell me about, so you said you, your, your boy was writing your bars for you. Tell me about Correct. writing your first bar. And, and that experience, how difficult was that? Um, how, how, what inspired you? Uh, what, you know, tell me that process of, of putting together your first set of bars. And did you like it or did you hate it? Or did you, like some of you stay, stay away from? Mm. And, and we'll, and we'll go um, from there on uh, other things you've written from, from that standpoint. But just talking about okay. writing for the first time and for those listening, young rappers that are wanting to get into the game. And, you know, what kind of did you take from that and come in and putting that together? Okay, so uh, from when I first started writing, I didn't write in bars. <laughs> I wrote like paragraphs because I wrote more visual. 
so I I could see what I was writing. I didn't write necessarily just uh, from the text format, trying to be creative. I wrote more of what I was seeing visually. So I, I wrote more like a movie style. Um, you hear like uh, Jay-Z talk like that, where he says, hey, I don't write anything down. I just visualize it and I repeat it back. So I, I wrote more like that. I had to visualize it and then write, because once it came out, I was an artist. So I had to visualize it up here first and then start writing. So when I did write, it wasn't necessarily bars. It was more like a, a big, long paragraph. It was a big long paragraph that I, that uh, I eventually <laughs> I hooked up with some friends and got a beat to put with it so that uh, <laughs> it can rhyme and make sense. But in the beginning, it was just a big long paragraph, me just rapping, and um, it was it was real wordy because once again I was reading comic books, so it was real <laughs> wordy, and uh, and then I was reading a dictionary on top of that, so it was real wordy that didn't make any type of sense. <laughs> Got you. So what inspires, so when you want to just create and, 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 mm -hmm. and, and, and write, you know, some tracks, uh, like mm -hmm. you, you, well, you being the nerd ninja is like, do you like watch a bunch of anime or you read some comic books? Like what gets you into the flow and, and like, uh, how do you, you know, create? And then on the opposite side of that, uh, when you hit a writer's block, you know what I'm saying? You, you, mm -hmm. all of a sudden you're trying to do it, but then you, you, you know, you crash and you, nothing is coming out. Mm. Uh, how do you overcome it? Is it reinvigorating what you do to create? Or do you have to do something else completely different and just blank out your mind? Mm -hmm. uh, tell me your process. Mm. Okay. So before now, I used to force creation. Um, before I used to, the old, the, I tell, the 90s format is we sit down, we write. That's all we do. We write, we focus in on writing. We're going to get the hottest bars, the hottest lines, the hottest whatever. But we sit down for this hour and we're going to write. That's what we're going to do. We're going to sit down and write for this whole hour. Nobody can go anywhere. We're going to sit in the studio. We're going to write. Um, when I did that, it, was, it worked in the beginning, but that wasn't who I was as a person. As I got older, I realized this. Um, so in the beginning, I sat down, I wrote my bars. If it didn't work out, get, uh, get flustered. If I get writer's block, oh man. Now, but when I got right, I was mad at myself because I wasn't creating because in the 90s format, you're supposed to create, right? You know what I'm saying? Like you're supposed to create, that, that was the format. If we're in the studio, I wanna hear your hardest bars. That's it, because you remember nice, nice. It was it was a uh, red man, method man, outcast. Know what I'm saying? So you had to have the illest bars. If you're going, if you're coming to the studio, you got to write the illest bars. So if we're gonna sit down for this hour, we're gonna create the hardest bars that they ever heard, right? And that, and if you don't, then you ain't got nothing. You suck. You suck because you ain't got nothing. And so that '90s format, I had to grow out of because that's not who I was as an MC. So now. I chill out. If I got rise block, all right, man. I just chill. I chill, and because while I'm chilling, I'm I draw I draw inspiration from life. I draw inspiration from interacting with people. That's how I get like for this last project. It was just interacting with people, hearing their stories. It was uh, it was watching what was going on. Uh, it was uh, having conversations with my wife. It was having conversations with friends. You see, what I'm saying so. I take it all in and then build it up. So then once it's built up, then I can release it correctly. So now I chill out. I chill out. I don't, I don't try to force myself to write when I'm not in the zone. Because usually if I'm not in the zone to write, I'm working on the computer. If I'm working on the computer, I'm, you know what I'm, saying? I'm, doing, I'm putting the energy elsewhere. But before, from that 90s framework, I would take that energy and try to force it out. And then when it doesn't come out, you're just beating yourself up because it's not coming out. And now you try. No, so you, I mean, if you... Have, have you, you have you ever been MC? You MC? Uh, yeah, I used to do a little bit, man. I used to do yeah, a yeah, bit. yeah. I hear, I hear yeah. your tone. Yeah, but you, but you, but you get what I'm talking about. You remember that yeah. old framework where they're like, "Hey, oh, of course, if you come in here, you got to write. You got to, you got everything was serious. Everything yeah. was, oh everything yeah, was straight." But because you, know you don't want to waste that studio time. That studio time's too, too expensive, it. bro. Too expensive. You don't waste that studio time at yeah. all. At all, yeah. at all. Now, Crazy Bar, now it's totally flipped, especially like around here. They come in, they because the new recording style, they record bar by bar. You know that's a new recording style, but as far as like the the, the lump and all that, I don't I don't force it anymore. I chill out, I relax, I stay stress free, and then I draw in for um to wrap it up correctly. Uh, I don't I don't release singles because 
and once again, I write from a comic and illustration mindset and a, and a visual mindset to where I have to put a whole package together so I can give it to you. So when I, so when you listen to it, it's not just listen to a single, you're listening to a, a thought process come out. It's a complete thought process that you're listening to when you listen to all the projects together, all that one project together. It's a complete thought process. That's why I don't force the rush it because it won't make sense. Uh, Cause sometimes we'll rush and try to put something out and you're like, what's this? So I want to be happy with what I put out. Nice. So yeah. I love it, man. Yeah. There's room for everything. You know what I'm saying? So that's, that's yeah, beautiful. Correct. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Correct. Okay. So let's uh, talk about, uh, uh, so you laying down tracks. So you got into hip hop, you know what I'm saying? Started writing your own bars and we talked about process. Let's talk about now uh, mm -hmm. putting together some music. And then uh, from looking at your your uh, your bio, you open for some some amazing groups, man. Let's talk about that, like mm -hmm. like getting into music and then all of a sudden, you know, getting picked up by some of these cats to like open for these cats. How, how was that whole experience in the community, uh, you know, grasping and appreciating what you're doing and wanting them to you to join in and, you know, hop on uh, at some of these performances and touring? Because you're you, you like you said, you that's what you do now. So how did all yeah. that come together and how can all these other cats out there learn from you to to get that to help build what they're doing and aren't getting that kind of reach yet? Uh, you know, let's talk about that. Okay, so uh, let me do it like this, because pretty much all that all that comes in phases. Um, first, first phase with the uh, with Lil Jean before I came Black Nerd Ninja, I can show you a stream of emails I was sending out and saying, "Hey, can I open for you? Hey, can I do this? Hey, can I do that?" Uh, to local venues and to uh, different management and different. Uh, touring companies so i so it's just a stream uh, and pretty much in the email it was just me begging let's keep it one thousand there was me begging for an opportunity and making that transition over i had to because by this point the internet was booming so you had youtube and you had um this was in the beginning i i came across a dj uh dj Payne one dj Payne, i think that's his name uh, i came across one of his video and he he pretty much broke down on how to go about doing what you're looking to do. Once again, before I started Black Nerd Ninja, I took four years off. I took four years off and in that four years, I sat down and I studied the business. I sat down and I listened to videos. I sat down and I got around some of my elders who, were, who came before me. I sat down and watched, uh, I looked at our history, uh, local history of those who came before me see, and said, you know what, what was their downfall? And what 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 did I like? What I did? What did I not like? And I sat and I just stayed my local history, and then I watched the bigger board. Um, and when I when I came in that four years, I came out different. I was no longer begging. I was creating because um, you know you create the music, but you also have to create your own opportunities. So I was creating um, my own opportunities. I stopped begging. Um, so the first thing I did was I said, well, you know, first thing, if you want to do shows, because I had the projects together. Um, and before you hit the stage, this is what open mics are for. Open mics are for you to go get on stage, test out the material and to test out how you move around on stage. Um, it hasn't changed. That's that's what open mics are for. Open mics, not, you can go and go do the contests and whatnot. Don't knock it. Cool, if that's what you want to do. But open mics have their limitations also. So open, all open mics are for an artist who's just getting started, who's never been on the stage. Go get on stage somewhere and do that for a year or at least six months. Go get on stage somewhere and perfect your stage performance. That's what open mics are for. Um, so I did, I did these different little open mics. Um, and then, so once I got past that and I got comfortable with the new material, cause this is new material. I was going from, um, creating, um, a lot of vulgar stuff to, to promote some clean and uplifting stuff. Cause if you listen to everything I got, it's all clean. It's just no real wordy lyrical, but I wanted to promote a different message. So I knew that was going to be an uphill battle. So I went and got on, I uh, went and joined different open mics, did all that for, uh, I think I did like at least for six, six months to a year. So once I got comfortable with the new material, then I start reaching out to uh, different venues. I start I start connecting back up with old friends who had different connections. And so the first big thing I got with Black Nerd Ninja will be opening up for Black Alicious. 
Um, Because by that time, I was building my buzz up, and I also was online networking. I was creating videos. And here's why why I messed up that. Because, and again, this is right before Facebook started popping, and this is beginning where where you can go live and you create videos all the time. So I was doing that all the time. And then what happened was, so because we all have our moment, what happened was someone said something like, he go live all the time, and I let it knock me down. But I should have kept doing it because look what's happening now. Everybody goes live all the time. So <laughs> that's for those who, uh, who, who get knocked off their horse easily. Don't, don't listen to nobody, right? Create your movement, create your moment. So anyway, so Black Delicious was the first uh, big thing I did as Black Nerd Ninja. And once I did that, I knew I had to take that opportunity to really solidify my name. And that was locally when I did that. Um, so I knew I had to take that opportunity to solidify my name that night, and we did that. And we got a good, we got a good chance to talk to Gift the Gab, and he, he broke he broke a few things down. But they were cool. And then I would say the next opportunity I had was I got a phone call saying, "Hey, um, Lil Ify's gonna be in town. Lil Ify does uh, he raps more." At that time, it was all the raps were about Harry Potter. <laughs> I can't, you know, it was, it was dope though. It was dope. So he, but he was touring. He had been on MTV too. Uh, he, he done some great, amazing things. And so I went down to, to one of his, uh, to a show he had locally in our town. And I went down there cause I had another mutual friend that introduced us both. And so we got to talk and I got to talking to his management and, and I was like, hey, you know, I'm, I'm looking to get on the road, looking truck, because I knew that had to be the next step. Locally, when am I trying to hear? When am I trying to do it like that? They're like, hey, yeah, you're good, but you're not these other entities that were already in play. Um, so I knew I had to create my own name. So once again, I was creating my own moment. So I got to talk to this management. And then finally, a day came, um, I want to say at least a month or two later, his management reached out and said, hey, we got this, uh, um, we're doing a concert down in Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, we want you to come up, uh, come down, and we want you to perform. Here's your guarantee. Um, here's this. Here's that food. All, like, you no, know said like literally what you've been working your time for, right? To get those, to get that email saying, "Hey, it's paid. You got guarantee money. Um, your food this, your food is provided. You know, the the hookup, the hotel, like all that. That's that was the phone call. All you gotta do is get down here. And at the time, I didn't have a car. Um, really didn't have a lot of money, but I knew. When I sat back, when after after I got through speaking with her, when I sat back, I said, "This is a define. This is going to define me. Either you're going to do this or you're not. This is that moment where you do or you don't. Either you're just talking or you really want to do this. Because if you're just talking, then you're going to be like, "No, nah, I can't go. I can't make you. Ain't going to even try." Um, so that was a defining moment that got me on the road touring. Um, so I ended up reaching out to my brother. And reaching out to another good friend who became my brother after that. And we just split the cost, man, just to get down there. And we, excuse me, we got down there. We had a great time, man. After that, we've been on the road ever since, bro. Excuse me, because he his net his network introduced me to other networks because I met some other cool people, you know. So I would say if if anything, you got to create your moment and you got to build your network. That's why I'm able to tour now, because I built my network. Um, yeah, so that if yeah, and uh and if you're able to save some money, <laughs> let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. I know what locally they're going to tell you. But listen to me now. From someone who's crashed and burned, who's done this, save money. You need a budget. You get a budget up, you can call whoever you want. All you got to say, hey, I got this amount of money. Either they're in your budget or not in your budget. Get you a budget that you need for touring, you need for recording, you need for marketing, you need for promote. Get you a budget. You get a budget up, you can pretty much get anybody you want, as long as you're in, as long as they're in your budget range. That's it. Money talk. Yo, salute, brother. My man just dropped some serious knowledge. I love it. That's exactly what I was looking for, especially for these young cats that be listening to to this uh, uh, podcast and everything. Man, I love it. That's beautiful, man. Yeah. So much knowledge right there. Um, so, uh, let me, let me, you know what, let me add some more to that. Cause again, I've been peeping yeah. the work. You have a, a YouTube channel, uh, mm-hmm. that I have noticed, man, a, a great, you just, again, you're, you're, you're to, it's all to me. I love to give back. You know, I'm, I'm blessed to be uh, where I'm at the platform of, mm, of, of that I, I'm, I'm on now to reach out and in order to, to stay creating you you got to know what's going on with the cats but you know below you or or and you know i wouldn't right. say it, I, I hate to say it below me that that was the wrong word to use but you know what i'm that, saying that are still coming up good. they you yeah. know what i'm saying that that, that are that are yeah, trying to make behind it, you to yeah. get to where exactly behind me there we go 
but mm-hmm. that are coming and, and maintaining and, and expressing how they can do it. Cause you want to see them come up. Cause that's, that's just how you stay you uh, current yeah. mm-hmm. and, and then you keep on elevating. And so yep. it's always about giving back and I love it. And those mm-hmm. are some amazing words. And, and uh, like I said, I was peeping the YouTube, peeping the website and you, mm-hmm. you have three, you, I, I love it. You had like this three tips, you know, little video yep. that you like, boom, here's three tips. Boom. Here's three tips. Uh-huh. Um, how did that come together? Why, why is it important for you as well to reach out to these cats that are trying to get into the game or maybe not even get into that? Because just in general, those tips are, can help anybody. And so Any, that's very anybody, beautiful, man. Yes. So yep. salute to you yep. for dropping tips <laughs> yeah. to just help create a better world, man. I appreciate that. Really. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. So pretty much the three tips came across because uh, after – so when I was the last four or five years of touring – um, I had a full house, so I had I had people I was I, had, I was mentoring a few people. Um, so I don't mind mentoring, so I was mentoring a few people, give my knowledge, I give my wisdom because I want to see people win. I don't do it for they don't pay me anything. Only thing you pay when we're when we're touring, you just paid your portion. That just goes with it. I can't come home and tell my wife they didn't pay them. It don't work like that. <laughs> but I had a full house, and I was mentoring. I was mentoring. I was giving out information, giving out information. They would take it and eat. So now they're doing their own thing, man. And um, so after I know it's like, okay, they're doing their own thing, man. I got all this knowledge and wisdom. What got me back into it was a fellow IT member um, was struggling. And I was like, dude, I start asking a question. Well, do you know how our environment works? He's like, no. I said, well, have you went on our page and studied it? He said, no. I said, well, that's your first problem. So when I started mentoring him, it got me back in that groove of saying, hey, like, no, just because I, when I mentor, I keep it 1,000 with him, man. Like, it don't, because we have this, he's younger, he's, he's from that younger generation, but they have, some of them have this mentality that I'm just going to give it to you. That's not how it works. That's, nothing works like that. Nothing, nothing. I know, I understand what the uh what the marketing is telling you I understand what your friends or people are telling you, but nothing works like that it doesn't work no one's just gonna no one's just gonna hang you anything nothing no, no one's gonna hang you anything so I had to I had to convey that to them to let them know like man it, here's how it works let me help you navigate let me help you navigate this system let me, let me help you navigate this world a little bit better because right now you keep causing trouble on, for yourself you making your life harder I believe now people are really making their own life harder because they choose not to take heed to the wisdom that someone can give them. So he was making his own life harder. So, so, um, so we took like three, it took like three to no, yeah, three to six months to really build him up and get him to a place to where he was able to be self sufficient He wasn't worrying about his job anymore. His uh, personal life was going good. Cause once again, it applies, it, it applies to your uh, professional life, to your personal life, to your um, creative life. It, it applies to all of that. Cause people keep thinking, Oh, this is different from this. No, no, no. It's all the same. There is no difference. You're one individual and you just, you're in these different um, positions, but you're still the same individual. So if you're a, if you're a terrible at home, you can be terrible here. If you're inconsiderate at home, you can be inconsiderate here. If you're selfish at home, you can be selfish here. You are going to keep going with you. So I had to, so I had to break that down to him. So that what got me back in the mode to mentor because I had all this knowledge and all this wisdom. Because once again, I used to be him. <laughs> <laughs> and that's why I talk like I used to be you. You're not doing anything new. There's nothing new that you're doing. You just think it. You think it's new because marketing told you that. But I'm telling you, it's not. And so pretty much after um, after six months was up, he came to my office and sat down and looked at me. He said, "You know what? My life is way better now." I said, "No," and I said, "You know," I said, "What did we really do though?" I said, "What did we really do?" I said, "I didn't make you do anything." I made re- recommendations, but I didn't force you to go put the work and put the time in. I said, you put the work and time in. You just took heed the wise counseling. You changed your life. All you did was change your perception. That's all you did. You just changed your perception, change, change the way you viewed things. That's what helped you out. You stopped being selfish and start being selfless. I said, I said, but I didn't do anything. I didn't really do anything. All I did was just say, it made it just point these things out to you. So when when after six months was up with him, that's when I was like, you know what, maybe I need to make, make these three tip videos so that I can just point some stuff out because it applies throughout your whole life. Keep people keep thinking that things are that I'm 
different from this person. I'm different from that. No, no, no. You're not special. There's nothing special about you. Someone just worked harder or had a natural talent in something, but they don't make them special. That just mean <laughs> that just mean they study a little harder than you. Just because someone has a piece of paper don't make them special. That just mean they took time and dedicated their time to something to get some paper. They showed enough self-discipline to get some paper, but they don't make them special. You know what I'm saying? So I had to break that down to him because he was viewing it. The views, man, was so the views reminded me of the 90s framework. That's what it kept reminding me of what people were over mass over manhood or mas masculinity was a real big thing. And now, like even, at, even when I got married, man, I tried to take that same approach in my marriage and it got me nowhere. I'm trying, well, I'm a man, I'm supposed to do that. It's like, why? She she likes doing that. Wait, why? Why you can't even do that? So why are you trying to, you know what I'm saying? We have these, it's that old 90s mindset that we got that I, I was so amazed that people still even had, right? But we gotta we gotta get past all that. So that's why I put the three tips out to say to start sparking those thoughts, sparking those changes. It's not saying go do it, but here's something that can make your life a little easier. So that's why that's what sparked all that. Bruh, I love it. <laughs> Beautiful man. Oh yo, real talk, real talk. You want some real talk? <laughs> Come to the NOC. No. There's a color. My man, Black Nerd yeah, Ninja, dropping yeah. it right now. <laughs> Love it, good. bro. Thank you. Love it. You know what I'm saying? Thank There's just moments. It, yeah. I, I, you, I grew up in South Carolina. I was raised all over the world. My okay. dad was a military cat. But um, mm -hmm. that that I can see that, you know, because you know, I'm not too far. When I was in South Carolina, you, Georgia right there, man. Like that, yeah, that, right that, that, that mindset and, and when you live mm -hmm. in different areas and, and, and places, um, just the growth and and just yep. and mm -hmm. I don't know how old you are. I'm 43, uh, so I've been around that and I've been around that yep, kind of yep. different mentality. And mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. I'm a I'm a big I'm a different person than I was now. And like you said, in, in your whole evolution, um, yep. man, just beautiful, bro. You're just dropping yep. dimes. I hope yeah, these are hitting <laughs> people in the head where they need to, because it's just beautiful Cause stuff. Because right you, you got to keep in mind, like like that world is no longer here now. All you can really take from that world is the work habit. And that's where we're going to win at. And that's why I tell my friends, because I'm 39. And that's why I tell my friends now who are the same age with me, because they think it's over for them. It's not over. The internet don't care who you are. It's not over. All you got to do is take that work ethic that we got from the 90s, apply that now. But all that other stuff, man, you see it's getting people in trouble now. <laughs> yo, yo. Ahead, you can't, you can't, you, you can't, <laughs> you can't use that now, man. It, it would kill, essentially, it would kill your life and kill your relationships and kill your journey because you're still trying to live by a business model that's no longer, that's literally what we're going through right now. You got that, got the new business model and you got the old business model. Once upon a time, they said you could not work from home. Now you're working from home. Once upon a time, they say you could not uh, communicate across the world. You communicate across the world. You see what I'm saying? Once my time they said there was no money in gaming, there was no money in rapping, there's no money in being art. But now we making a killing. You see what I'm saying? This is a second income. This is a third income. People are surviving off of this, man. So it's not that mom and, mom and dad and them or grandma and them were wrong. They just didn't see this world. We're in this world now. You literally can, you literally can do everything from your phone. You can Tell do everything me. from your phone. You Tell remember me. once upon a time, <laughs> All you could do was, I'm going to go old school. <laughs> that you remember was, that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, so it's just so now we just got to help help them uh, help them apply that work ethic there. Because, once again, like like I said before, it, they're so discombobulated with, from marketing and from what they've seen, what they think it should be. And then once you say, hey, man, you got to do the admin work. You got to do this part of it. Like, I'm not just popping up at the venue saying, hey, I'm here. No, no, no. I have to make sure the venue know I'm coming. I have to set my days. I have to make sure my guarantee is there before I even get there. Then I got to make sure what's the rules and regulations of the venue. What can I can and cannot do? What props can I bring? What props can I not bring? Where can I set up? Where can I not set up? At? You see what I'm saying? So there's still rules and regulations. So that goes to what I said before. Nobody just does what they want. Nobody. The world don't work like that. That's but that's the that's the life slash dream they're being sold, saying, hey, you can do whatever you want, but they're not telling them about the pitfalls. Hey, if you do do whatever you want, there is a place for you that has bars around it. They will lock you up in there. You see what I'm Woo! saying? Because you're not being mindful. You're not being conscious. You're not being, um, 
you're not you, you know what I'm saying you're just not used to, like there you say you're not using some common sense like <laughs> you gotta use a little common sense like you gotta be able to have some wisdom around you so i i made a video about that like hey man you need to speak with some give some get some wisdom around you speak with someone who's been there before you and so they can tell you the pitfalls you know what i'm saying i, t I still tell the young mcs man like hey man if i were you get a budget you spend the money on this that's cool make that video dope but if you get a budget you can put that on marketing, put that on promoting, and put that on this and this and this and this. You can promote, look at your insights on Spotify, look at your insights on your, um, I'm about to say MySpace, look at insights on your Facebook, look at all your insights and see who you can market to, find your demographics, and you and that's how you win. You win like that, you know? Beautiful, beautiful. My man, dropping knowledge. Like I said, this has been beautiful. So let's talk about the project, all, how, all of that evolution <laughs> of you. <laughs> that led to this latest project, yes, R-H-H-L-W-P, Respect, okay. Humanity, Honor, okay. Loyalty, Warriors, Proudly. Let's discuss this, man. Yes, sir. <laughs> Tell me yes, about sir. this project. How did it come together and why? Why is it so important? Okay. So the project, uh, so initially there was a project before this project that was ready, but I was waiting for a certain features and I had some nice features on it. Um, and so I didn't want to just release it and not have a buzz up for it. So then I started working on this project. And so with this project, I already had Pray, if you've heard Pray. I already had Pray. That was already done. Um, so I pretty much just based everything around it. And then I sat down and said, well, what do I want the message to be? And so then I, then I thought about what was going on in the world. And I thought about conversations from with friends and family. And so that's when I came up with the title. And so with this project, I really want people to leave. I want them to enter in because it kicks off with a, a flustered black man saying, hey, here's what's going on. Here's what I'm feeling. But then it goes to, hey, I also have this trait too because it goes to the young man. Young man is going back to when I call myself trying to be a bootlegger and trying to have, uh, trying to call myself, trying to uh, have strippers in the house to make some money because I was money hungry. You know what I'm saying? Then the cops bust in on it, so it goes back to that. So that's letting you know I'm not perfect and I make poor decisions. So then it goes from that to saying, you know what? Uh, I forgot the next song. It goes from that to, <laughs> to me and G talking about trying to come up, saying forget all this, we're just gonna come up in the movement. Then it goes from that, you know what I'm saying? So it walks you down a path until you get to valleys and mountains. Valley mountains just like, hey, I talk about like my liver's not working 100%. You know what I'm saying? Really, that's that's factual. Like really breaking it down to like, hey, this is a timeline that you'll go through. But you know what? Let's end it on happy knowing like, hey, you'll get through it though. It's all good. That's why I ended with you and I, T-Y. Because at the end of the day, people believe, we all believe we're not connected. But we are connected. If the world blows up, we all blow up. We all connected. It don't matter what you identify as. It don't matter what you, if you're white, black, it don't matter about none of that. This is bigger picture. If the world blows up, we all blow up. It won't, none of that other stuff is going to matter. So I wanted to end the project with something light and something beautiful. Say, hey, you and I, T.Y., like, that's how we got to bring it back together. We got to bring it back together like that. So that's, that's what got us with this project. Dope, dope, dope. So did this project come together last year or was this this, this past year? No, no, it was uh, this year. It was this, this year. year. Uh, I so during these COVID times. Mm -hmm, correct. Wow. So I recorded, uh, like I said, the other project, like at this time I have four projects lined up. Um, this project, I had the songs around. Like I said, okay. Pray was already done. I had another song that was on there because, you know, you over record. You don't record just six songs or seven songs. So I over record. So I had songs ready. Yeah. So I, I actually ended up searching for a new stuff to put in between to make it make sense. Cause I didn't want to just put anything out where you just like, oh, what's, what is this at the end of the day? So I wanted to make it make sense. And so I recorded that project uh, this year, okay. this year. So I dropped in September and recorded like a little bit before that. Wow, yeah. wow. So how was this, how just recording in these times, you know, that's been different. We, and we spoke on this a little bit earlier, but just, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. are, are, how proud of you that you were able to, you know, put together such, you know, this project with, with, with what's going on, going on, or did it really help to, with, with the inspiration for the project to, to make it come together? Like, you know, cause there's a lot of people, mm -hmm. like, like I said earlier this year, man, um, you know, for example, this uh, interview that you and I are doing right now, this would have been number mm -hmm. 700 for me, man. Yeah. Like I would have been mm -hmm. doing interviews after interviews, but when COVID hit, bro, I didn't yeah. want to do anything. Yeah. 
I concentrated yeah. on family and friends and it was a good mm -hmm. four or five months in that I was like, I need to create because I've been to, you know, mm -hmm. this depression overcame mm -hmm. me. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I know Correct. there's much more for me and, uh, and that I want to give to the world. And, and then I was mm -hmm. seeing some other you know, musician friends, some rappers. They actually, they're the mm -hmm. ones that hit me up. I had a friend yep. uh, that, yo, yo, I'm dropping this album, bro. I want to, you know, talk about it on the knock. You know, can, can you, can you mm -hmm. interview me for it? And then another di cat dropped a comedy yep. album mm -hmm. that he recorded mm -hmm. uh, at the, at the theater without an audience. I was like, you, a, yep. as a comedian, you know, yep. and as a, a, a comedian, you know, has to get the vibe from the crowd. Yep. To record a comedy mm -hmm. album you know what i'm saying uh -huh. that's that uh -huh. was insane so my yeah, boy here man. writing uh my, my my mc friend writing music which you know you kind of aren't with the crowd you know when, when you're putting mm -hmm. laying down tracks for an album so that was you uh -huh. know but it was still inspiring as fuck is to see him do that mm -hmm. but then this comedian cat to do this without an audience mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying just mm -hmm. that energy yeah infused me in it and it mm -hmm. well it's actually jumping back doing this i started a new podcast mm -hmm. uh on the knock but so props mm -hmm. to you brother to just make shit happen yeah, man. what's going on right now because yeah. you're yeah, inspiring other people that are like me and, and others that aren't even doing anything right mm -hmm. now to just mm -hmm. create you know yeah man. there's that energy you want to get to the world and it's kind of like cooped up and or it's in a stalemate mm -hmm. right now so props mm -hmm. to you bro so uh you know, so so yeah, I, that long way to say to go back to my question. You know, <laughs> now you're good. You're good. I, I, because I, I had to give you your, your props, your flowers. But uh, so yeah, just how we, beautiful was this project to lay down? And 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 yeah. like you said, uh, and I'm reading that was inspired by your everyday black man experience this year for yeah. my, my my brothers and sisters like yourself, bro. Yeah, man. We had a, it, yeah. we're still trying to say that fucking Black Lives Matter and people aren't hearing yep. it, but we got to keep saying yep. it so they understand. And it's, it's just mm -hmm. terrible. But mm -hmm. so I'm mm -hmm. sure that probably inspired a bit of the project. Like mm -hmm. just, and we got this, finally we're getting this orange man out and we got a cat that I think <laughs> is going to show us love, but uh, just brother, yo, yo. So I'm sorry. Long way to say yeah. I, no, I went on good. a tangent, <laughs> but I'm just That's hyped for That's you, bro, to just do this and create, man, because mm -hmm. we need it. Yeah, We're man. Hungry. We gotta keep in mind, like for creators, it's not good for us to sit down long, cause we 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 go to dark places. I don't know if people realize that straight up about creators, but if you if we're not creating something, you'll we'll get uh we'll become uh uh you know just agitated. You know what I'm saying? Cause we we're we're seeing so much and we. We know we want to write it, but we're not really in a place to write it. But we know what we're seeing and we know how we would construct it. But you're not inspired to uh, convey it just yet because now you're just taking it in and you're on lockdown. You're trying to follow the rules and regulations, really not trying to get no trouble. You're really trying to stay off the radar. You're just sitting at the house. Uh, but in my case, I was still working because I was because uh, I do IT. Um, so I was still working. But even with that, you had the videos that you're seeing post every day, you know, murder videos, murder videos, murder videos, murder videos, you know, and you're seeing all that and it's just in, and you, what, what ended up happening for me was eventually I had to stop watching all of that. I had to take five, man, because it was taking me down a rabbit hole, taking me to a place. Because once they, we get up every day and we already know, yes, it is a possibility. There's no question about it. Whether you believe it, don't believe it. It is a possibility. Every day I get up, I know this could be the day. Every day is a possibility that someone could try to exhort, um, uh, put more, want to show me that they are in power position. That could happen every day. We encounter it every day. That is a possibility. It's just that one night you're like, you know what? I don't care. Boom, here you go. You know what I'm saying? So seeing all that up to that point, I had to just cut all that off, man. I had to call that off and just chill out. And then, like I said, I had Prey sitting there and I had that big project waiting and I knew I wanted to do something. And so I reached out to the studio and said, hey, man, what y'all got going on, man? Let me, I need to come, come through. You know what I'm saying? And then at that, by the time I reached out, that's when you start, that was the time where everybody started releasing the um, Black Lives videos and songs. Everybody started, like, even around here, they uh, they put a project together. And I saw so in my head, I was like, I don't want to, I don't like to, and this ain't no not against nobody. There's no just against nobody. I I just I didn't feel comfortable releasing something during that time. 
I just didn't because I didn't want to feel like I was capitalizing off of it, um, off of what was going on. Because once again, my major is marketing. So I didn't want to feel like I was capitalizing off of something. Um, but like once again, that's not knock to anyone. Uh, I just didn't, for me in my house, I didn't want to feel like I was capitalizing off of it. Because um, people reach out, hey, do you have a song? I pray off back, you know, fits what's going on. But I didn't want to release it on that time. So I had to wait a little bit longer till all that all those songs were released and they started, you know, riding out. And while they were doing that, that's when I was recording because I knew I had to release all these things. And I wanted to take it back to a place, take it back to some different areas of the show. I really just want to overall show the humanity, man. Like, hey, we all we all are terrible people. I tell I always recommend Robert Greene's uh, I think it's human. What's the name of Robin Green? I have it, man. Robin is Robert Green's. Uh, let me find it right quick, man. Because this is you. If you read, if you listen or read this book, it'll make people will make more sense to you. If you listen, I got an audible book. I'm lazy right now. I got the audible book. If you listen or read this book, this book right here. Let me pull up. What is it? It is Laws of Human Nature by Robert Green. If you take a little time and listen to that book or read the book, humans will make a lot more sense to one to one another. I know I phrase it like that. I know it sounds weird, but <laughs> but it will make more sense to one another because then we'll understand all of these different uh, sides of ourselves. We understand that hey, you just like that. You just like that. You know what I'm saying? We understand like yes, I do have a dark side, and that's okay as long as I work and grow from that. That's why you have books like Emotional Intelligence. You see what I'm saying? So if you listen to that book, I think a lot a lot more of what's going around will make sense. And you'll be like, oh, that's what's really going on. But during that time, while, while those songs were out, I just, I just simply just sat down and recorded and took that time to really record something slow and not try to rush it out just to put it on somebody's project or just to be seen. I really wanted to release something that really would be impactful, that would inspire people at the end of it, um, that, hey, we got to work together. Beautiful, man. Thank you. Appreciate that. Love it. It's all good. All right, my man. Um, before I let you go, um, what we always do on the Nerds of Color is we do a nerd check. Nerd check. Uh, and you're the black oh, nerd ninja, bro, so you should oh be able God. to pass this with flying hopefully. colors. <laughs> <laughs> Look, hopefully. <laughs> well, actually, you know what? Before I, I even do the nerd check, I wanted to holler. Are you a turtle? I'm assuming you're a turtle man, a turtle fan. Cause you got Ninja the golden, Turtles, yeah, you yeah, the, yeah, you, you, yeah, man. The turtle logo, and you yeah, made it yours. yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. I love that. Go so, so, yeah, man. Who's your favorite turtle, real quick, before I go into the complete Le- nerd check? Leonardo. All right, okay. Leonardo. I yeah. feel that the leader got the two swords yep. <laughs> popping off. Okay, yep. Yep. all right, my man. All right, so nerd check. Uh, if you were to do a TED talk on on anything like nerd, like or it could, and it doesn't even have to be like your normal pop culture stuff, nerd. Nerddom I'm could ready. be I'm... computers. Yes, I know. It could be, you know, what you're just, if you're to be tasked to do a TED talk on anything, what would it be about? Uh-huh. And, and and we'll go from there. So, uh, Halloween. Halloween, Michael Myers. This I cap like right here. I knew you were going <laughs> to say that because I peed the YouTube. And you know what? Uh, for everybody, I'm going to throw a little snippet right here. Peep this. And then we're going to come off of that. But, uh, I knew this brother was going to say because I peeped it off his YouTube. <laughs> this guy's a Halloween cat right here. Check this out. I think of the series more like a multiverse, right? So you got Halloween 1, Halloween 2 that go back to back, right? And then you got 3. We don't know what's going on with that. Um, then you got Halloween 4 and 5 that go together. Um, that's when Lori left her daughter in Haddonfield. And then you got, um, then you got the curse of Michael Myers, right? <clears throat> which that's still Jamie Lloyd coming back. She dies in that one. Um, and then you got H2O. Okay, so now with H2O, H2O, they just forget about... <laughs> they forget about um, three, uh, three, four, and five, if I'm not mistaken. They forget about that, and they pick up after two, when he burns, right? So they pick up right there. <clears throat> But then after that, you got Halloween Resurrection, if I'm not mistaken. So with Resurrection, she dies in it, right? And so she dies in Resurrection, and then those new series of characters come come and play, right? Um, and then. 
so we don't really count that one it happened but it didn't happen let's just think like that h2o we pushed it a little bit but i like it i like it. i like all of them that's i'm just weird like that i really don't set a high bar um but i'm just weird like that so then <laughs> so then you got the Halloween that came out in 2018, if I'm not mistaken, right? So then that picks up after Halloween 1, right? <laughs> so that's why I call that multiverse. Um, so then <laughs> you got that one that picks up there. Then you step outside that universe, you got Halloween by Rob Zombie on uh, 1 and 2, which uh, in its own rights is dope. Like, I like it. I, I know some people are hit and miss with it, but once again, I like it. You know, it's, it's pretty dope. Um, so Halloween's a multiverse. Um, I love Michael Myers. Um, Boom, we are back. <laughs> That's my guy, Black Nerd Ninja. He knows all about Halloween. Uh, real quick to come off of that. So why Halloween for you? Because Halloween's like a multiverse. It's like a multiverse. Like you kick off with, with one. And you know that's the original cast, original crew, and then two comes out, and I like, and it connects one and two, right? So then you get three, that's just an eyeball, and it just sticks out, has nothing to do with Michael Myers, nothing at all, okay? And then we get the uh, four and five. I'm gonna try to run these together. Four and five, where where uh, Lori leaves her daughter in their hometown, <laughs> but that's terrible parenting. Leaves her daughter in her hometown. And wouldn't even be a problem if the doctor, when he was checking his pulse, when they got him inside the, the, uh, the ambulance, and Jay Paul said something that he had a relative and that sparked him back up. And so he started going after the little girl. So four and five, he does that. And then we get to the curse of Michael Myers, because you know, they grab her at the end, right? So now they still got Jamie Lloyd. So she dies at the end of that, and then leaves a baby. So then that leaves that off, right? Okay. So then we got Curse of Michael Myers, and then we get to Halloween H2O. Okay, Halloween H2O picks up after uh, two. <laughs> so you got so Halloween H2O picks up after two. It it doesn't even recognize three, four, and five. So that's that's the first skip in the multiverse. So it goes boom. Okay, so Halloween H2O uh, picks up after two. Then uh, Halloween Resurrection picks up after uh, Halloween H2O. Right? Okay, so now. Uh, then you got the remake, Rob Zombie. So then we we move this whole universe over here. So Rob Zombie drops his universe in, where he um, he kicks off where Michael Myers is more. You get a more of a backstory. You get more of the rawness of him, which is still I like the Rob Zombie. I like it. I like. It. I know fans are a little weirder, but I I, I like it just as a fan because it was dope. I like see people's perspective on things. So his one and two, where he gets more mystic in the second one, which is cool. So then you got that whole universe. So, okay, then we pull that out and then we pick back up where uh, John Carver jumped back in with Halloween uh, 2018 and that picks up after Halloween 1. So he disregards that whole universe up to that. <laughs> so he picks up there. So now you got Halloween going to Halloween Kills that's coming out next year. Yes, Halloween's a multiverse. <laughs> I love it, bro. I love I love the nerddom over Halloween. It's it's one of my it's one of my Halloween classics. Literally, you know, the month of October, where uh, you know we watch a bunch of scary movies for the month of October. Yeah, yeah. but uh, Dude, man, before I'll we talk about round. upcoming stuff, what I would like to see just just personally was I want I want uh, a Halloween trap beat, and I want Black Nerd Ninja to write his own <laughs> Halloween film, but through bars. It, it, with a Halloween yeah. trap beat. I, I'd love to see what you would come up with because you're a Halloween stan. You know what I'm saying? It would be dope to see that. Yeah, so yeah. anyway, that's what I would like to see. But <laughs> what do we have coming up with uh, Black Nerd Ninja and how can they follow you, you know, and, and peep what you're doing online and all that? Okay. Uh, BlackNerdNinja.com. You can connect to everything in one location. Um, so just go there, the social sites, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, SoundCloud, Spotify, Amazon, all of it's right there in one location. Uh, you can check out what I've done on the video and music page. If you want to shop with me, we got shopping tour, um, tour dates, currently no tours, but you can shop. Uh, we're always updating that page. And then um, currently on either right now, hopefully I'm on track to release a project either New Year's eve or christmas eve or new or christmas day or new year's day that's what i'm on track for so that's what i'm practicing right now getting ready for so i want to ho hopefully knock this project out within a week um right now i'm practicing getting it down pat as far as like rhyme schemes and all that good stuff so uh we got some nice features on this next one too we got some nice features on this next project 
And we got some nice features on the project after that. I don't want to say names just yet because I want to connect all the dots first and secure the contracts and whatnot. But they're definitely, they already have their verses. Um, I've worked with one of them before. So yeah, it's going to be dope. It's going to be dope. So yeah, just stay tuned in. So BlackNerdNinja.com, Go Ninja Go. That's the motto. My guy, it has been a pleasure. Uh, as soon as those n- upcoming you, projects here. come out, man, hit us up. We'll talk on it again. Yes, and I love it. Yes, sir. Um, appreciate you, brother. Yes, Thank you for the inspiring words, man. Uh, there's hey, a lot of knowledge that was time. dropped on this one. So I hope y'all take heed. The brother yeah, gave it to you. you. Love it, yeah. man. Pleasure talking to you, my man. Stay safe uh, out there. The same here. Um, have a blessed rest of your year. And then again, let's let's connect again. Yes, sir. Will do. Because I'm going to come and ask about that shop, man. See if I can buy something. <laughs> bro. Yo, I am Kuya P, a.k.a. Patrick Michael Strange. You can follow me at Strange since 1977 and at Temple Far East and here at the Nerds of Color where we have amazing rappers like my black nerd ninja cat over here. We're going to definitely have them back, man. Love y'all. We out of here. N-O-C. Yeah. Go yeah. Go go Here we go. Feels good right there. Yeah, yeah, that's great. Yeah. 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 I was born black American. African is my Mexican. You mad depressing over some pettiness. Yeah. I got him. Kill that noise, feel that void, kiss that girl, chase that boy, money bands, increase your choice, getting faded, on the blue lights, house raided, paraded, violation, testimonies, allegation make us more paranoid, jury duty on my duty, my my business boy, I witness, kill the witness, yeah they witness more, let me handle my business, they clocking my business, they twisting the mission, time snatching, posting they business, stay out of my my business, you flex intentionally. You only telling your business. I'm tearing up protocol. 